All right, let's take a look at the blade here. Make a new material, call it blade, mask with color selection, and then we'll just make it all the way metal. And this one's got kind of a, it's a little bit duller, at least on the upper part. Now, I guess there's an argument to be made. I wonder, yeah, so that, this area here is definitely going to catch the light, which is which is giving us the same kind of look there. So I think it's probably not necessary to make a new material, like a, a glossier material or something for that area. But we do have a little bit of like a, a blue tint to it once again. So I got to figure out where that blue stuff lives. You see, it just pops it just a tiny bit. And then it's got this like, uh, again, sort of a noise on it. But I think the noise is mostly in the roughness. So I'm going to make a new fill. And I'm just going to call it Blade Rough. And we'll add it to, or we'll add a uh, mass with cover selection once again. But for this, I'm only going to have it affecting the roughness layer. And I'm going to add a, go to the, the mask here and add a fill. And then I will make my life a little bit easier here. And I think this is probably going to be in procedurals rather than no, uh, uh, grunges. Spelling again would be very useful. All right, so I'm just looking for a very generic noise. That's probably perfect. And what I want to do with this material is I just want to change the roughness on it to be different than whatever the one whatever the one below it is. And I think we could probably go maybe the other direction. Again, we're just looking for something that's different so we get a little contrast there. And it feels like it might be a little bit too big. Whoops, let me go back to my... So now I'm in my fill here, the, the uh, blue noise fast, which I guess is what that is. And I want to make it a little bit bigger, right? So you can see how when I uh, change this value, I'm getting either like bigger noise or smaller noise. So I kind of want to just dial that in. Let's try like a... So and if I go smaller with this value, it gets bigger because I'm effectively zooming in on the texture. So that might be okay. Again, we're just looking for like a little bit of a, like a sandblasted thing. Just something kind of subtle that just catches in the light. This is feeling a little bit too much, the speckly thing here. Might revisit that in a second. But uh, let's do this, uh, this spacer thing. Add a mask with color selection. And this thing is going to be like a soft blue plastic. So I can actually sample the color, get it just right. And we're going to make it, leave it totally off on the metalness and make it kind of dull in the roughness. So there are ways that you can get like a translucency thing going, but it's, it's not really worth the trouble here. It's like a little bit of a waxy vibe to this. So we could, if we wanted, we could add like a little tiny bit of, I mean, it's kind of there already just with the highlight, but it's almost like there's a, the metalness underneath this coating is kind of poking through just on the edges. So let's just add that, something like that in real quick. Call this one blade edges. We'll add a mask with color selection. Sorry, not blade edges. I want this to be handle edges. Okay, and then it's going to be all the way metal. Hop over to the material itself, make it very metallic. Maybe we just brighten the color a little tiny bit. And we'll keep it nice and shiny. And then I'm going to add in here a smart mask. So we'll go down to smart masks. And we'll find one that's got like some kind of edgy stuff going on. You can see some of them are focused on the on the cavities, and some of them are going to be yeah. Here's edges 
strong. We can just probably look at this and perhaps modify it if we need to. So we've got our mask and then we've got our color selection. So we need to make sure that we set the mask to multiply. So if that's not clear, we turn this off and we'll hop into the mask. So when we're doing a multiply operation, you can see we have black, which is zero, and we have white, which is effectively one. And then when we add something on top of it, when we set this to multiply, we're multiplying down into the value. So if we multiply something by zero, it just stays black. But if we multiply something by one, then we, we start to get that, uh, that combination there. Whereas if you use like an add, it's just going to add it to everything in the exact same way, right? So like if I set this to add, it's going to, this is already white, so that stays white. In fact, it probably goes above white, which might be problematic, but Painter probably handles that for you. But then everything here, now all of this just gets added. So where this is contributing a value greater than zero, that just gets added in. But we don't we don't need it to be talking to anything here other than the handle. So I'll set that to multiply, and this is our effect. I'm going to go to the mask editor, and there's probably going to be like some, there we go. I want to get rid of the texture. And we're going to have some curvature stuff here. And I want to make this thing just like super tiny. So tap M. So we can kind of see what's happening there. But it gets very procedural feeling if it's like on every single edge, the exact same. So with that, we might want to do something like we could either go in and, and try to paint that stuff out just on the edges there. What am I even? Yeah. So it's like even finer than that. It's just this, this outside edge is really where it's kind of happening. So I'm going to add a paint here. Normally I would try to avoid any actual painting, but sometimes it's not, uh, not avoidable. And then whatever, we'll just grab like artistic brush. I am going to turn my symmetry on and I need to make sure I'm on the right axis here. You can see where that line is going to be. It's like off, off center for some reason, probably something to do with the uh, fusion component of it, but let's see. So if I, if I, uh, so point 0.1, so you can sort of dial it in. 0.04, let's see. That looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. You kind of don't want it to be exactly the same. And then into this paint, I'm going to paint black. So we're painting a mask. And I'm going to set my flow and opacity down a little bit. So we can just kind of knock that stuff out. And this is just with the mouse. You, you might want to use a tablet if you've got one. And we don't have to go over the entire thing. I kind of just want to show you how to get some of these, how to break up some of the procedural stuff, which can really, especially if you're, if this is a portfolio piece and you're showing it to other game artists, everybody kind of understands how easy it is to apply a procedural effect to something. And so you want to make sure that you, you do something so that it's not quite so obvious as to what's going on. And if you had a more complex material or model that you were trying to do, this just might take a little bit longer, but again, it's worth, it's worth the effort because the game artist is going to appreciate that you took the extra time there. Okay, cool. So let's see. Um, we're about at time now, so I think I might do a pass on the little logo thing here just to kind of show you what that process looks like. It's pretty easy, but uh, we'll have to take care of that in the next video.